Hey friends, welcome back. In today's video, I am going to show you how to power carve with a Dremel tool. Now the techniques I'm going to show you in this video are detrimental and you need to know them if you're going to be wood carving. So I invite you guys to come along and learn with me. Welcome back friends. If you are new here, do me a favor, do yourself a favor. Hit the, hit the subscribe, I'm not that vain, I promise. Hit the subscribe button and the bell notification icon beside it. That way you will be notified for new uploads. So in today's video, I am going to be teaching you how to carve a Celtic heart. Now this is what's so great about this. As you begin to carve these Celtic patterns, you are going to be learning so much about depth and how depth works and all this crazy stuff. This technique alone is what really got me into power carving. So I'm really excited to share this with you today. Now the tool we are using is the Dremel Stylo. You may have seen this on other videos. This is one of my favorite rotary tools right here. One nice thing about this is the ergonomic design. This will allow me to get in some tight places. And if you look right here, the power button's on this right here. You turn it on that way, and five is the highest speed settings, and as you lower it, it just gets lower. And as long as you keep your demands reasonable, it's gonna work great. The burr I'm gonna be using is this inverted cone head diamond burr right here. This is nice because it just gets nice straight lines. Now, the wood that we will be using is basswood. It's this little basswood box. Now, if you guys follow me, you know I'm a huge fan of this. They make fantastic gifts. You don't have to go buy a large slab of wood and put a random design on it. I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna put this design on this, carve it, and have a gift box and give it to somebody. Or sell them, whatever. Yeah, yes, people do buy these little gift boxes. Now, there are a lot of ways to stencil, but what I will be using is this carbon paper transfer right here. And I know there are different methods. So many people give me a hard time over this because I'm old school but this is the method I like doing. Before we stencil this image to our piece of wood right here, I want to share an awesome trick with you guys. This saves so much time. This is the image we're carving. I downloaded this right to my phone on the browser. Find the image you wanna carve, okay? No need for a computer. After you download the image, go to this app right here. You can download this called Print to Size. You see it? I'm gonna click on it. This is what comes up. I'm gonna hit plus, all photos, select our photo, and guess what? Here is the great thing about this app. We can resize it to the whatever dimensions that we want. We don't wanna get our image too big or it won't fit on the box. I'll take it down to right about here and that should work. Now we're gonna hit print. Now if you have your printer set up and it's an air printer, which means it's a Wi-Fi printer, we can take it and just hit print and guess what? We just printed this. Okay, now we have our image to transfer. Let's cut this out. I'm gonna take the stencil. We wanna get this on nice and straight. Now we're going to add some tape. I think that's going to be all right. Okay, now we are simply going to take a pen and draw along the edges and just trace everything out. You see the intersection of the knots right here? We got to see which one is going under and which one is going over. Don't confuse the two. We want to make sure everything is overlapping correctly. You guys ready? There we go, that's looking good. But one thing we need to do right here is straighten up our edges. I can't stress this enough. What if we slip and we go over here? Well, that's why we want thick edges. So we're just gonna go along here and try to even everything out the best we can. Okay, we thickened our edges up. Everything is looking good here. Before we start carving, we have to take the appropriate safety measures. I have a dust mask I got from Amazon right here. I'll post the links below 
So anyway, I put this on here. I like this compared to a traditional dust mask, if I can get it on for the camera, because, hold on, because it's comfortable, it just fits right along there along the back. The next thing we need is some glasses. Now, not just any glasses, but fog-proof glasses. Let me show you what happens when you use traditional glasses, because as you breathe, the air is coming from underneath here and hitting underneath the glasses. So as you're carving, it gets foggy, so make sure you get some fog proof. Well worth it. As we begin carving here, I want to show you something. Now, please listen to me. I need your attention, okay, guys? We're going to make one cut right here. We don't want to go too deep. We want a light pressure, but not too light. Let me demonstrate this for you guys. Keep nice consistent pressure across. I'm gonna do that again. The next thing we wanna do is go to the other side right here and make a cut. Do it again, get a little deeper. Now for the corner here, what I usually do, I come in at an angle. I'm gonna start right here. I'm barely turn it. Just like that. Now what we want to do is just go along the edges and get nice consistent cuts. And remember, mind your marks right here. Don't don't cross over like right there. I almost cut into that edge. Now we're going to carve the rest of this, then we're going to go back and we are going to down cut the knots. Okay, this is looking pretty decent. So the next step we want to do is take down the negative space. And makes it easy like when you fill them in with a pencil so you won't get confused. This right here, you see where these two intersections meet or like right here and right here. We are gonna have to come in at a angle here and ramp them underneath because it's a knot. Knots tie in together, right? The parts on the side, need to be lower than this right here, okay? So here's what we're gonna do. You have to have steady hands right here. There's obviously different burrs and bits that can do this, but I wanna use this one. I'm just gonna go along here and take it down. Be careful that your burr don't fly away from you. See how that's looking? That is looking great. We're gonna go around all these negative spaces right here and do the same thing. And we're gonna go to all the knots and ramp them in, being very careful. Now as you're doing this, watch this. Listen to what I'm saying, guys. I'm saving you a big headache right here. So two pinkies down. I keep about two fingers on. And it gives me control when I have it like this because I can move it around, but everything's controlled. Okay, do you see how this is coming together now? We're gonna go back over this and smooth it out a little. Then we are going to go on the edges here on the outside and do the same exact thing.
Now, after we get through carving all this and smoothing it out, we are going to hit this with some sandpaper. So just do this thoroughly and get in all the nooks and crannies and give it a good sanding. That is looking great. Now we are going to move on to carving the knots. Take you a pencil and start marking the areas you are going to carve. This will help alleviate confusion. Now we are going to take our Dremel and come in at an angle and carve those knots down. Be very careful right here not to mess anything up. Just go in there at an angle and just start carving. This is going to give the effect that the wood is being tied up under each other. This is the secret to the knots right here. You want this to be super smooth. So we're gonna go around this whole design right here and just repeat this process. After we finish carving, we want to move on to some sanding. I grabbed a clothespin right here, wrapped a piece of 220 grit around it, and went to sanding. Now, the object of this is to make everything smooth and crisp. So you wanna get right up next to the lines and just really tick out any imperfections you see. After we sanded really good, we're gonna move on to the outer edges of the heart. Now, the whole technique for doing this is holding the burr at an angle and just barely taking off just a little bit of wood. This really just helps bring the heart out. Just go along the edges nice and slow and make sure you have good, even cuts. And after this, you guessed it, <laughs> more sanding. Sanding is what makes this whole thing look nice. Look at that. That's looking pretty good. For the next part here, we are going to apply some stain. Now this is optional, but I love the way the stain makes the box look. So I always use stain 90% of the time. I'm using Minwax Red Oak. And what we wanna do here is just get our brush wet and brush the stain on back and forth. And you may need to dab this in the hard to reach areas. That way we can get good coverage in the negative space. We're gonna just go along here and get the stain all over the box and wipe it in good and then wipe off the excess and let it dry. Now after this is dried, I am going to sand the top part, the positive space of the heart design simply because I want the top part to be a little bit lighter than the background. This just helps make the design pop. And here is the secret to this. After I'm done sanding this, I am going to quickly stain it and wipe the stain off. And that is the magic combo that just gives it the look that it's going to have. It's the next day and the stain is dry. Look at that. That turned out pretty awesome. I think the colors are pretty good. And once we put the urethane on here, it's going to look a lot better. The urethane I am using is the fast drying clear semi-gloss. This is probably some of my favorite urethane right here. Now what we're gonna do is just pop this open. I have a Wooster brush right here. This will apply a nice smooth finish. And now let's go back and forth. Oh yeah, those colors are starting to come through now. We're gonna go around the whole box and let it dry. Then we are going to go to the bottom. Now 
that's looking pretty nice. We're gonna let this sit for probably about five hours and come back and check it and maybe do a second coat. Well, it's the moment of truth. <laughs> Let's have a look. Oh yeah, I think this turned out pretty good right here. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and remember, please look at the concepts that I showed you in this. Even though you might carve something different than this, you can grasp the concepts that I showed you and remember things that you catch stays with you longer than things that you learn. Did you catch that? <laughs> so just remember that and just take the principles and concepts that I showed with you home with you and incorporate it into your own wood carvings. Do me a favor if you haven't, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification. And also, if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. Leave a comment and let me know what projects are you guys gonna work on? Like, what way did this inspire you? I would love to hear the ideas that you guys got from this video. So until next time, take care and be creative.